Hello and welcome to this edition of the Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful podcast. In this episode, we are going to be talking to Mr. Johan Duran, who is the Acting Director of International Blue Flag. We're going to be looking at beaches, the Blue Flag programme and the importance of them both. And I'm delighted to welcome from uh, Copenhagen, uh, through via the wonders of technology, uh, Mr. Johan Duran to the Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful podcast. Johan, you're so very welcome. Thank you very much, David, for having me. Okay, Johan, first question I just want to kick off here is, tell us a wee bit about the Blue Flag program. Now, obviously, it's one of the more recognised programmes that certainly Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful uh, works out with. But if if you've been living under a rock and you don't uh, and you don't know about it, uh, what is the the, the Blue Flag program? So basically, the Blue Flag program. Uh, this is one of the five programs of the Foundation for Environmental Education. We are an international uh, NGO, so non-for-profit, non-governmental. Um, and the Blue Flag program this is an award uh, scheme uh, program for coastal areas, so beaches, marinas, and tourism boats. So through a set of criteria, we do award sites worldwide. Uh, in terms of information and education to the environment, safety, services, environmental management. And at the moment, we do have about 4,800 sites awarded uh, worldwide across 49 countries. Mm-hmm. And obviously, this is the this is because this is a question we would often get asked. It is important to note that if you have a blue flag beach in, say, Northern Ireland, I know you, you attended the, the, the Beach and Marine Awards uh, two weeks ago, um, virtually, Johan, is judged against the same criteria that somewhere in Copenhagen, for example, or in Denmark, sorry, uh, uh, is as well. Absolutely. So we do have sets of criteria at the international level, which is uh, the regular uh, set of criteria for all countries across 49 countries. Uh, meaning that you would find the same criteria in Northern Ireland, in Chile, in Japan, in Canada, or in South Africa. Uh, Same goes all across Europe. Um, The only thing that could be possible, it's at national level, our national operators, the member organizations running the blue flag may be stricter or add criteria, depending Mm -hmm. on national and local context. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is that, you know, an important thing about the Blue Flag program is that, you know, when I think of Blue Flag, even before I came to do any work with Keeping Around Beautiful, I was aware of the program, I automatically think of beaches. And certainly when, my, when me and my mum, we would go on holiday and we'd go off to, to somewhere around Europe, mum would look for the Blue Flag. Thing. But it's not just beaches, Johan, isn't it? It's, it marinas are, are in there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is not... Beaches will represent... a bigger percentage of awarded sites, of course, but the marinas uh, are also an important uh, actor in this in this program because not only uh, you can enjoy your local environment, but sailors, they can go across Europe or they can find the same set of criteria in a marina in Spain, in Northern Ireland, or on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in Mexico. That mm-hmm. is correct. And that- yeah, and it's and and it's fascinating that and it's also fantastic as well that there is something there that has standardised criteria of excellence. You know that 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 we know that no matter where you go, and so someone sailing their boat in here up the up the river Lagan is is you know judged against the same standards as you know a boat maybe on the Seine or 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 somewhere else as well. Um, Absolutely. Why is what, what, why is it uh, so? So uh, we've touched a wee bit on this, but we elaborate a wee bit more. Why is this? Why are programmes like this important? Do you think? Well, that's that's an interesting point because the Blue Flag program at the very start, this is a voluntary award. So there's nothing mandatory for municipalities or marinas or tourism boat companies to acquire the Blue Flag. What is important, it's, it provides a framework. It provides sets of criteria which are comprehensive for the managers to implement them, but also for the general public it makes sense. And there is a flag flying, which is the same all around the world, providing a stamp of excellence, a seal of approval and trust. Mm -hmm. And obviously you were talking there, uh, it is important to to note, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned it, about this being voluntary. You know, this is something that 
whether it's a local council or or whatever whatever authority it is uh, in in the relevant country. I mean, this is something that they're putting in for. They're putting the effort into actually going through the application process and then and then being judged on that. Um, I just wonder if you could talk a wee bit about, you know, the the importance of that because you know no one is forcing anyone into this, and you and and you know that when you do see that blue flag or that or that certificate that uh, that they have done this voluntarily, they're they're, they're taking it upon themselves to actually uh, do this work. Absolutely, I think this is very impressive and important. Uh, to take actions and to go forward with the blue flag because it shows a political interest. Uh, sometimes with this, this is the mayorship or uh, the elected board that will take the decision, but it also involves all technical people within the local councils. It brings local communities around NGOs taking part of the blue flag. So um, this is a voluntary step, but bringing local communities and also tourists alike, because for the blue flag could be either for beaches, marinas or tourism boats. They have the imperative criterion to offer environmental education activities during the season mm -hmm. and sometimes outside of the season, which brings uh, everybody can be part of the blue flag. Um, so when we're talking about climate change, about sustainable development, uh, this is a way forward, but also this is a proof of action from uh, local actors. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I mean, the, the, the environmental education piece is just so critical, Lisa, because, you know, you were referencing there about, I mean, climate change is, is such a big issue. It was a big issue at the G7 uh, fairly recently. Obviously, it will be touched upon later this year in Glasgow when world leaders come together. I mean, from, from, from what you've seen, obviously, Johan, you, you see this prog program across, across the world. How important is that environmental education piece? Well, by definition, education, there is no time limit on that. There will be always work to do. Um, part of our work is, of course, to offer the blue flag, but also to be present at uh, local, national, but global events as well. Uh, the blue flag through the Foundation for Environmental Education, we will be present in Glasgow for the COP26, indeed. Um, we try to promote and also because we gather so many millions of tourists and local communities alike worldwide to promote the voice to protect the coastline and our environment and try to provide best practices that work and can be replicable worldwide as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, that's, uh, and that is so critical. What role do you, so I, if, I'm just, I always think about these podcasts when we're recording them, the person who maybe just stumbles on and wants to learn a wee bit more about the environment. So what role do beaches play, Johan, in our environment? Why are they why are they such an important part of the of our ecosystem and, and our heritage? Well that's 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 an excellent question. I would of course they do play an extremely important role for the environment. They are a melting pot of flora and fauna uh, providing uh, beautiful biodiversity that needs to be protected, of course. Uh, this is this is one part. It brings also social aspects, recreational activities. It brings public health. When you go on on the beach or at the marina, you can relax. So you're working on your physical condition and me mental condition. We've seen that during the pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it brings an economic um, improvement as well with the development of local tourism and uh, could be national or international tourism as well. So. Uh, across the three pillars of sustainable development, I would say that the, the beaches are, have an important role into that and it needs to be protected. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, here, um, even though it is it is the Irish Sea, I mean, people here have taken up sea swimming. Sea swimming is now a huge thing. People, uh, I, I tried it myself about six weeks ago uh, and little did I know from professional sea swimmers that was the coldest time of the year to actually go into the Irish Sea, which was very, very cold. I can I can assure you, but it's brilliant. But people are talking about the importance there. About you know, you you, you very neatly wrapped it up there about you know the mental health benefits from that, um, the social benefits actually meeting up in the middle of a pandemic to meet up with a friend and to do it safely, but also the the tourism thing, you know, about maybe going and you know maybe purchasing something from a local restaurant or a local shop. Um, do you think that the general public are aware of that? I mean, do you think that the general public actually, uh, you know, across different members, I appreciate this is very general, but but do you think that we as, as a public know 
the how how impactful those things are. I'd say yes and no. I would say yes and no. Maybe not the broad view on all these uh, aspects, but in in few bits here and there, most of the people would take part of a local association, a local club. Uh, maybe you know just have a walk in a ni- nice national park by the sea. Um, every single bit basically would be can be add up in any case. Mm-hmm. That's our role with civil society, uh, local, national, international NGOs to raise awareness and to provide activities, tools, and also um, advocacy tools to raise awareness towards our leaders and decision makers to improve our local and international environment. Mm-hmm. And that leads me very nicely on to my next question. What can we do to take better care of our beaches? I mean, here, just locally and also uh, in Southern Ireland and on the rest of the UK, Obviously, with our winters, Johan, in, in Denmark, you may be the same. Um, when we get good weather, we uh, we we are very quick to run to the beach and take the opportunity when we can because we don't. There's many months of the year where where where, where you wouldn't be going near a beach uh, here locally. Uh, so, what can we do to take better care of it? Because typically, when we do go to beaches here, there are some people who litter, and uh, there are some people who don't take good care. So, what 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 could we potentially do? Well, first, I would say the first actions would start at home. I would say uh, every single actions you would do, uh, flushing, for example, there is all hidden systems of wastewater treatment that at the end of the day would potentially end up at sea. So every single actions you can take at home will have an impact also on your coastal environment. When you're going uh, to the beach, I would say, first of all, open your eyes and try to read the signs. Sometimes you have information board providing information about conservation, about how the beach is managed, uh, which type of activities you can take part. If you see some litters, uh, you know, it doesn't take that much to just pick it up and put it in the trash bin because Mm -hmm. this, in the long run, uh, if I take plastic, for example, this litter would end up as microplastics and yeah. at the end of the day, that will have an impact on fauna, flora, and end up at sea for many, many years, basically. Um, so yes, this, and I would say also, look, if you want to take further actions, look around you, many uh, local NGOs, many local organizations take action, and you can always join any activity uh, around you, basically, mm-hmm. enjoying the fresh air, but also doing something good for the environment and also for the people around you. Yeah, absolutely. And and the volunteering piece is, is so is so important. And, and we and we often say it, and there was actually, uh, when we had a spell of good weather two weeks ago, there was actually a good campaign on social media about getting people to, you know, because, because quite often the excuse, Johan, that she's there, oh, well, sure, the, bin, sure, the public bins are full. Uh, we can't do it. And then there was a great campaign kind of back here about, you know, well, you can take it home with you. You know, you don't have to, always around public bins you can you can go go back and take your stuff with you um you talked a wee bit about the pandemic um now the pandemic obviously has impacted all our lives all across the world and i know with blue flag being an international program it must be difficult for yourselves to keep to keep track of because obviously different countries are doing different things and managing different in different ways um how have you seen the pandemic have an impact on the work that you're doing um, well, I would say the the most important that we've seen for the past year, uh, the most challenging part that was for all awarded sites uh, during the season, they had to cope and continue with the blue flag criteria to continue uh, to comply with uh, our high standards, but also piling up another layer of public restrictions for health reasons, of course, and all the sites have been playing very fairly trying to protect the people and ensuring that the highest level of services, environmental management um, are ensured, basically. Um, we've seen, of course, in, in, in countries uh, needing a lot international tourism, uh, some sites uh, had to close for part of the season because missing tourists, and that has uh, that has had a huge economical economic impact 
but we've seen also um, local tourism having a, being, a, a big boost, I would say, and a rede rediscovery of your local treasures. Sometimes mm -hmm. a bit overwhelmed, actually. Uh, so it has had an impact, uh, of course, um, but the beaches, marinas, of course, have been playing a good, big role in, I would like to, to emphasize on that, especially for the pandemic, on mental health and, okay. uh, and, and physical, physical health as well. Uh, I think the coastal environment had a, a great impact on trying to, to get the people to, to keep up with the situation. And sometimes it's been it's been very tough for the people. Mm -hmm. And I, and you're absolutely right about that. You know, I remember back in February when we were in the middle of our third lockdown back here, and just taking taking the train out to the coast and just being able to walk up and you you were allowed out for a bit of exercise. And you know, you're right. It it helps you clear the head. And you know, you would see other people just sitting, just watching the sunset. And you know, just it was it was it it just took you out of the the bad news that that, that we were absolutely. seeing. And you. Know, you know, and uh, and uh, and the, and the, that that was the bit I wanted to talk on to here because you were talking there about tourism, lo about discovering local treasures again, and actually kind of you know recognizing the importance of your beaches, your marinas, all the stuff you had on your doorstep. I mean, have you heard? Um, have you have you seen many reports of that yourself in terms of in terms of the feedback you're getting from local operators? I mean, is that you know are they seeing much more local you know uh, take up of 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 what's on their doorsteps? Well, there has been. There has been during the past season. Uh, um, and sometimes in an overwhelming uh, use of the coastal environment. And that was very difficult for some from some local councils, uh, local actors, to keep up and ensure that um, it can be enjoyed by every people, uh, everybody, uh, safely. Um, I would not... Of course, local tourism is important, but we will need, and international tourism will continue as yeah. well. Um, yeah. And therefore, uh, the pandemic might be also a way to uh, resonate and also bring a new perspective on international tourism, uh, lowering maybe the impact, the, the, the huge impact on the on coastline and environment you can find across mm -hmm. the globe but maybe with new regulations that will try to reduce the pressure we have on our environment. But both tourisms are important, but the way to do tourism may change over the time in the, in the near future. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's okay as well. You know, about, you know, even until I, I started doing work here about the concept of green holidays, about being environmentally friendly before maybe not buying, uh, buying uh, excess bottles of sun cream and, you know, making sure that you've got reusable soaps with you, making sure the hotels you're going to uh, don't don't uh, depend on reusable plastics. and uh, Sorry, don't depend on single-use plastics and too much. And, yeah, you're right about kind of the power that we all have as, as individual actors here. Um, uh, next question is, um, what can we hopefully do better uh, in the future in this area? I mean, what, what lessons would you take from the pandemic, and I know you touched upon this a wee bit, Johan, but I just wonder if we if we can we can maybe go into some other areas there. But you know, what lessons we could maybe learn and and take and kind of I know the saying is build back better. Um, what, what could we what what can we uh, do to to achieve that? Um, a few of the lessons that uh, I would go back also to your local environments, well protected, it can be highly enjoyable. Um, it is okay to travel uh, in maybe a bit less, maybe in mm -hmm. other ways, maybe with more uh, sustainable ways of transportation. Um, but maybe sometimes your local environment has been a bit overlooked for years. Uh, and maybe that, that, that would be a way, uh, one of the lessons that uh, around you, you have the biodiversity to protect and you can see uh, loads of animals, plants that can be uh, eyes opening for future generations, but our generation as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just finally, um, obviously with the Blue Flag uh, uh, program, 4,800 sites uh, around the world, Johan. Um, uh, when um, uh, 
when uh, how do you think in terms of what's going to happen obviously later this year climate change will probably come back uh, onto the agenda uh with the cop 26 in glasgow um do you think that what we've just talked about with beaches marinas and the biodiversity and the the treatment of wildlife i saw the great barrier reef was in the was in the headlines this week as well uh, and the Australian government's actions uh, on that. Uh-huh. Do you think that these things will be at the centre of that conference? And do you and and are you hopeful that that can happen? Yes, I'm definitely hopeful that can happen. Um, I think this is there, there is a global understanding, and now it's time for action. In any case, uh, of course, the COP this is a major event globally, but there there are also other major events. Uh, there is the great work of Peter Thompson, uh, Special Envoy for the UN uh, for the Oce- Ocean, working on uh, Life Below Water, uh, one of the SDGs, and major events, major actions are, um, are taking place at the moment, and we're all working towards this Agenda 2030. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, Johan, thank you so much for your insights uh, and for taking the time. I'm sure you must be incredibly busy. Uh, Mr. My Johan pleasure. Gerard. Acting Director of the International Blue Flag Programme. Thank you for joining us on the Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful podcast. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful podcast. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be reminded of future episodes.